Joe Rogan gets into the topic of aliens, UFOs, and the Bible. So much in this conversation. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. If you're new here, or even if you're not new here, a huge percentage of you guys are watching the channel and not subscribed. So please hit that subscribe button. Make sure your bell notification is on. Joe Rogan sits down with a religious professor, and the topic of aliens, Nephilim, um, so many different things comes in. The thing that it's always struck me about the UFO experience, uh, particularly the abduction experience, is that it always happens when people are asleep. It always happens at night. Mm. It either happens on the road when people are tired and it's late at night, or it happens like, why does it have to happen at night? The universe doesn't give a what where the sun is in position to planet. Like That doesn't make any sense that all these UFO abduction experiences would happen only when the sun is on the other side. That's so <laughs> dumb. It makes no sense. It's literally, it's such an egocentric, earth-centric perspective that, and not even earth-centric, hemispherical-centric, right? It, it, it depends on where the sun is in position to the earth. So notice his first observation is that these UFO abductions happen at night. Yeah. Right. Yes. Why are they happening at night? They're going to get to this, and it's something that we've talked about on the channel before. For that to be the only time that UFOs come, I was always like, this seems like horse shit. There's something about it that seems like horse shit. But there's also something about it that seems real. When you listen to like Betty and Barney Hill, when they're, they're talking, boy, that sounds like people talking about a real thing. Boy, that sounds like a real experience. It really does. And these people like the Whitley Strybers, these people that talk about these experiences that happen at night, we know for a fact that when you are sleeping, your brain is producing endogenous psychedelic chemicals. Your brain, according to Joe Rogan, I haven't fact checked this, is producing psychedelic chemicals when mm. you're asleep. So here's my theory. What if these chemicals that you're producing when you're asleep, he's probably going to allude, are being produced by psychedelic drugs, right? So you're tapping into the same chemicals, but externally to make your brain's imagination fire off into different dimensions. Ooh. We have Spooky. no idea why. We have no idea what the purpose of those things are. We have no idea what the quantity is. We, we used to think, until recently, um, they weren't even exactly sure like where it was being produced. But now, mm. uh, through Strassman's work and through the work of the Cottonwood Research Foundation, the, the, the people that do those DMT studies, they know that now your brain is producing this. And so, is your brain, uh, is, it a, is it producing a chemical gateway into another dimension? That's great. What did Wise Disciple say in that original Nephilim video? It seems more likely that we're probably dealing with interdimensional beings. Well, the Bible describes some of these beings, okay? I mean, this doesn't exactly take God's word by surprise. The argument was that these quote-unquote UFOs mm -hmm. are not coming from another universe or another galaxy, that they're from another dimension. Rogan makes the argument that your brain is creating chemicals when you're sleeping that are the equivalent to psychedelics. Are these chemicals opening you up to another dimension? If we read the scriptures, we know the scriptures talk about pharmakia. Don't do it. Why? Because what if it's opening you up to the spirit realm in another dimension? Yikes. Isn't that interesting? That's crazy. And is that why these people are experiencing these abduction, you know, mm. air quote, abduction experiences? These, these encounters, which let's say encounters, is that why they're happening at night? Is that why they're happening while they're lying in bed? Because that seems to make way more sense. So far in the beginning... He's saying the same things he always talks about, psychedelic, yada, 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 but he's, but he's echoing something we talked about on this channel, Wise Disciple talked about on his channel, which is different dimension, not different galaxy, not different universe. Why? Because different dimension, different galaxy, impossible. You have to travel at the speed of light. Technology doesn't exist. You'd have to break some law of physics and some stuff that's just, you, you, you can't do it. They'd have to be thousands of years old if, for them to come from a different galaxy or a different universe, mm -hmm. right? So that means that they're probably inside of this guy inside of our universe inside of our system but they're in a different dimension what do we wh what does that mean for the scriptures from the scriptures that means demons Oof. michael heiser we're talking about elohims right not not elohim or yahweh god almighty but elohims right the the divine council the these different heavenly hosts good and bad spirits mm -hmm. right that are interdimensional not extraterrestrial so that leads us to one of the most fascinating interpretations of what we're experiencing collectively 
when it comes to this UFO, UAP, whatever it is, phenomenon. That this is not a thing from another planet that comes on a spaceship and, and lands here to show us how to do things correctly, but that they've always been here and that they are the things that are being described in Ezekiel, that hmm. they, oh. they are a phenomenon that is both here and not here at the same time. What that sound like? Demons, baby! That sounds like the Christian answer to what UFOs are. It's literally what Michael Heiser talks about. Rogan would love Michael Heiser's work. Rest in peace, Michael he Heiser. He would. He would love his work. He's, this is literally what he's talking about. We are actually talking about uh, ritual activity, worship, uh, so to speak, uh, in a Luciferian context that involves sexual abuse and other kinds of abuse. There are touch points between what people say that happened to them in these rituals or what the goal of an, ab an abduction experience was supposedly. There are lots of parallels. And we're not talking three or four. I've actually counted them. There are over 20. The metal tables, the types of wounds that people suffer. They're probed in all sorts of you know, awful places. Messaging about, we're doing this so that you can birth you know, a, a hybrid child. Now, the kinds of things you would hear in a satanic ritual abuse situation or any sort of deliberate trauma episode that sort of linked itself to Lucifer or Satan. You're, you are literally dealing with angels and demons. That this, is, that this, this phenomenon is connected to these ancient stories of religion. And it's, it's not as simple as other beings like us from somewhere else. That's insane. Ain't that good? I mean, if he figures out this side of, of the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. all, he, all he needs is Michael Heiser, and he's, he's closed on and Jesus. And he's closed on Jesus. He's like, oh, this is phenomenal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so I can respond to that. Part of why I continued to study this was that I saw the historical record included a lot of these events. And these events were weird back then, just like they're weird today. Right. And when you look at these events back in that time period, you also see a common pattern that happens today. And what is that pattern? That pattern is, is that, you know, let's take um, St. Francis of Assisi's stigmata. I don't know if you want to show, you know. Sure. One so if you look at his stigmata where it looks like he's being, you know, basically radiated by a UFO, um, that's what my students say when they go and they see this in, in the Louvre and, and, and such. If you look at the primary sources for that, this happens in the 1200s, and you look at what yeah, so that. So here you see St. Francis, but also over here on the right, you see his friend, Brother Leo. Brother Leo, actually, at the time, is probably 15 or something like that. He's 15? He, yeah, he's really young. Hard but, life back then. Dude looks 80. He, well, he he's, doesn't actually look like that. <laughs> <laughs> so the artist, yeah, so the artists actually are not getting at the primary sources. And that's what similar, similar things are happening today. So the representations that we get in the media don't look at all like an abduction. They don't look at right. all what people experience. And so what I did was I went through a lot of the primary source materials for Teresa of Avila has a weird experience that looks like an abduction, but they look beautiful. They're domesticated. They're made to look a lot more happy or something mm. like that. And I mm. think part of the reason for that, I don't think it's intentional. I think because it's traumatic. Mm. I think because once you recognize the, the people themselves are traumatized by this in both good and bad ways. Okay. So this experience is still happening. To call it angels and demons is, is, is accurate except for one part and this and because uh -oh. it, so it's accurate it's accurate except for one part here let's figure that, that there out there are bad things that happen sometimes people get hurt um francis died from that uh, wound or he died from wounds that you know were bleeding until so when he had this experience until he died which was about a year and a half later they tried to keep it silent in his monastery because they mm. were they didn't know what happened to him and they were horrified by it okay mm. and so until he died they didn't actually tell anybody so he kept it between him brother leo and probably another monk so there's this idea of shame almost you know this is like you know shameful but also this idea that so think bad things happen, and that's why people say, well, you know, demonic or something like that. Yeah. And uh, people do experience these things in different ways, and they still do. They still do. But what should we call it? Should we then use the terminology of people from 100 years ago and call it angels and demons? I don't think we should. I think that what we have to do is we have to take case by case, look at patterns, and maybe just try to proceed with different language. Because some mm. of the things were really interesting. If you do look at, say, experiences that Catholics have, say, in the 1960s that have been videotaped. Okay, wait. Don't call them angels and demons? So she basically said, eh, it's a little outdated. Let's just rebrand it. How do you rebrand angels and demons? Angels and demons. If it's angels and demons, let's call it angels and demons. 
All right, she, yeah, she's losing me here. <laughs> Mary experiences where the Virgin Mary appears and she reads people's minds and she does, you know, she's doing these kinds of things, levitating people together. If you put physics on that case, physicists on that case. And if you take, you know, the work of those people who are working at, I think it's the University of Washington, where they're doing MRI imaging of what people are thinking and they're able to replicate it. So if they're looking at a Van Gogh painting, they can replicate that. Mm -hmm. Well, this looks like a technology. Mm. So that's what I'm trying to say is that there's something going on mm. that could possibly be different and we need different language for it. And I think we're at the very beginning, just like doing this stuff hold with on, the MT. Hold on, hold on. Who cares if it's technology? We all just agreed that they're not from another galaxy or another universe. They're here. They've always been here. So what does it matter if it's technology? Interesting. It's from a different dimension here. What's more believable? That there was a lost civilization during that time that had crazy technology to do this? Right. Or that there's some sort of inter interdimensional uh, being that is described all through history in books like the Bible right. that describe angels and demons, and maybe they are what they say they are, right. and it's not some lost society that actually had technology. Like everyone, every like archaeologist wants to believe that. Like, dude, the the, the Egyptians had had uh, flying saucers that right. could that could build right. a pyramid, and they had right. lasers technology. Right. It's like right. y'all want technology. It's total deflection. <sighs> you were at the very beginning of learning about this this other world. You know, another thing that's fascinating about ancient religious art is the halo. Have you ever seen the earlier depictions of the halo where it looks like a mushroom cap? Mm -hmm. Oh that. gosh. Okay, I'm done. I'm <laughs> done with the, the dag on. I can't. This man wants to take everything back to freaking psychedelic drugs. We're so close yet so far. Hey, we're getting closer though. He's so close, but so far. Joe. Joe. So close. Joe's a Michael Heiser video away from one Michael Heiser video away from giving it all up. Or or he's in the uh the Lafay testimonies. <laughs> that, that one what that one testimony video away. And I start I laugh, but I'm like, Josh, you ate mushrooms. It's impossible. It, uh, it's impossible for you to die. Like you can't die from mushrooms. Like, cause I was feeling like I was about to start dying. Well, as soon as I said that, in all my pride and arrogance saying that. I turned around and I heard God say, who says I can't stop your heart whenever I want? Oh, man. Gosh, he was so close, man. Mm -hmm. He was so close. That was cool, though. That was very cool. That was cool. That was cool that they connected it to the same thing we talked about. If you guys want to see the time we covered that exact topic, where we reacted to our buddy, Nate from Wise Disciple, we'll pin this video over here. I promise you, you'll love hearing the exact same points that uh, Joe made that Michael Heiser's made, that Nate made, that tons of Christian scholars have made regarding this topic of UFOs. All right, I'll see you over there.